Okay, welcome to Stampscaping 101. This is a scene that I just stamped out very quickly um, using um, the snail image from a 100 proof press, 100 proof press that is. And um, I wanted to do something with um, one of the um, scenic sentiment quotes, but I just referenced it and um, a good traveler has no fixed plans and is not intent on arriving. But instead of stamping it over the top of it, I just kind of hand wrote it in with um, a gel pen. And it's really not so much about, you know, readability of it. It's just, I find that um, just kind of handwriting things over the top of kind of, especially darker scenes, especially, you know, with the uh, kind of the pastel gel pens um, to be really effective in terms of uh, kind of adding a little bit of a personal touch and uh, just kind of contributing some kind of decorative um, element to it. It's something kind of handwritten, so it's flat against something, you know, in, in this scene, in this case right here, it's supposed to represent deep space in terms of the sky, so kind of putting that over the top of it, it provided a little bit of a um, kind of a uh, contrast in terms of uh, space or representational space. We have something flat against something deep. And all the lo other little things in here are just the uh, standard uh, techniques that I've been using in the past with the dye-based inks, um, gel pen, and um, glossy um, glossy cardstock. Anyways, matted this on um, kind of some shimmery star dream paper, just giving it a real thin border to kind of bring out the little white highlights in there, but also that little thin border kind of uh, complements the, uh, um, you know, the, the line of the uh, gel pen work there. So anyways, I hope you enjoy this scene, and uh, thanks always for watching, and uh, hope you enjoy... I'm trying to think of uh, the name of this uh, scene, maybe Night Night Traveler or something like that. So, anyway, kind of a little twist on it. Um, when they were talking about that quote there, I'm sure they weren't thinking about a snail, but I thought it was just kind of a funny little image to uh, to use with that quote. So, anyways, thanks again. Okay, I'm gonna try to do a quick scene today, um, quicker than I usually seem to do them, but we'll see if I can get this uh, done in, I don't know, maybe a uh, half hour or something like that. I'm going to do something with um, one of the scenic sentiment um, sayings, but I might not use the actual stamp, I might just go with the quote. I mean, I, you certainly don't need the scenic sentiment stamps to do that, but I'm just kind of referencing them, and um, I wanted to do something with the gel pens. Um, but we'll see how this kind of uh, develops as it goes. I don't want to say something right now and then just completely change course when it comes to the uh, that quote there. Um, okay, now this stamp right here, the snail, is from 100 Proof Press. Um, really great uh, stamp company with uh, tons of uh, neat imagery. A lot of it is the old uh, <clears throat> engravings and it's a really nice uh, kind of curated group of uh, those images, uh, plus a lot of originals as well. But uh, um, I like using a lot of them in my personal work. Uh, the code is 3128. I guess R, maybe that's the size. Um, okay, I just kind of placed that snail. I guess I looked at that little curve, curvature to that um, 
image, and I just kind of placed it right down on that area, and I just kind of, you know, as I was looking at it, I just kind of, you know, imagine this is the paper, I just kind of placed it roughly on the top, uh, you know, what I'm getting at is uh, I really don't need to uh, do any masking or something like that for that. Okay, I'm going to put, um, I was wondering if I should put a little bit of clouds behind this snail and ledge. Uh, that was the ledge, by the way. Um, maybe I will. Okay, let's go with a kind of a violet toned scene for this um, scene here. And I'm sure I'm looking at through my colors here. Let's go with maybe a blue. need to do some masking for this, but it's just going to be a very quick and easy mask using a torn paper towel, kind of like so. Okay, I'm going to blot off some of this um, cloud a little bit. I don't want it to be the full um, saturation of uh, ink. Okay, and let's go for another one. Impression, that is. Let's blot off the edges and blot off a little bit of the ink in the interior. Now right here I might have to, well, let's see. I was going to say, I might have to tear this paper towel a little bit uh, more, but I think that'll be close enough. Right there, some of this gets into the shell or something like that, the snail shell, then so be it, but I'm not really worried about that. Okay. And this will require a third impression. that, like so, kind of overlapping the previous impression cloud so that they kind of merge in with one another. Okay, now let's keep the um, this mask handy because I'm going to put some of this Milky Way large stamp. the uh, number 10 light blue. Yeah, I should probably start using some of these other pads like this Memento being that the, uh, the Marvy ones have been discontinued. Okay, I put that blue down here. This is a Marvy marker. Brush marker. Uh, 1600 series, I think. 1500 or 1600? 1500 maybe big fat tip markers. Kind of getting a little variation um, of ink applied to the uh, the stamp. Uh, <clears throat> trying to find my blue one here that I used in a previous uh, video. I think it was the previous one. Anyways, this is a number 36 manganese blue. It's a really bright blue. I love the color. I just wish there was a pad out there kind of with the same uh, value and intensity of uh, this hue. Okay, let's see how this turns out. i tell you what, let me just blot away some of the edge of this right here just to kind of uh, make the edge less harsh. And I can also just mask it off and just stamp it down there too, but sometimes I don't even need to, to do that. But 
let's see, let's take away some right there. Okay, some good variation up there. Instead of just one color blue, you can see all those variations up there. I mean, if I tried to get that exact um, combination of uh, colors again, I, I probably won't succeed just because of all the coloring that I did. I just used the memento palma blue there. Let's go back with the uh, number eight. This is a, well, it's a really dry uh, violet. Uh, for my purposes right here, um, in terms of blending of tones and, and whatnot on the stamp itself, um, kind of this drier pen is actually probably uh, a better way to go than a super wet one. Just because if it was really wet, it, you know, and if I went like that, it would leave a very distinct, harsh line. Uh, that being said, if that's all you have, super wet and juicy pen, then just, you know, take a little bit more time to blend, you know, a harsh line out with, you know, a lighter tone. Or, I don't know, you can even put a little bit of water on it. Before you stamp it out, you can spray it, you know, with a, just a little bit of a mist, and then make your impression. Okay, we have that little space right there. I don't need to you know, go over this whole thing with that. So I just need like a small area. And that's what area do you want? That one, this one, right there maybe. Hmm. I like that little star right there. Right. Go with that again. Just blot off that area. Stamp it out. Anyway, all right, let's get to some color application. Let's go with the Memento Summer Sky, a nice thick style of ink, or the Memento. Um, Die based inks. I don't know if there is a pigment memento or not. Um, but this is a dye based ink. Um, we're controlling our lighter values in terms of the relative. Uh, lightness of them in comparison to the rest of the scene by adding shadow. Meaning, if I want some area to stand out, like it's um, really light and bright, well, not bright, but light in terms of value, then I have to take the area uh, around it and make it darker. So if I want a star to stand out nice and light, then make the area around it darker, okay? So control your light through the use of shadow, as opposed to kind of a, a stage lighting coordinator that's using actual spotlights or something like that. We don't have that um, to work with on kind of white pieces of paper, so what you have is um, the tool of uh, shadow, shade, to, to work with, with our media. Um, I mean, you can make some areas lighter, you know, after you make them a little bit darker, but, um, and maybe we'll do that with some opaque um, or translucent pigment inks here, but for the most part, you control your lighting just with the use of shade. Um, and I'm saying all this, over and over again, because a lot of times people, one of the biggest questions people have is, you know, they they just can't seem, they tell me they can't seem to, uh, you know, retain the, the lighter areas, which is really just a matter of 
I'm not going over it with darker tones, okay? But I know exactly what they're coming from because when you first start off with these lighter tones like this, this is a pretty light blue, okay? And I'm bringing this in, I'm bringing this in here, and you know, I'm bringing it all into the scene, and, you know, I'm going around these stars right now because after I kind of apply it for a while using one inking, by the time I get, you know, I don't know, a few seconds into it, 30 seconds into tapping that all over the place, I just have a very little bit of light blue on this tip here, so that when I'm using this light blue all around like this, it's not leaving really harsh marks, it's very, very subtle, okay? I have to really put a lot of it down in that incarnation um, for it to even read at all. So. Sometimes what people run into is they they get into some of these darker tones, and if they're applying it at the same rate, you know, da 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 da, da all around, and if they get into uh, some of these areas, it's really getting dark in there. So what you have to do is just when you move into the darker tones, just stay on the edges a little bit more. Okay, be more perimeter oriented and. If you do bring the darker tones into the scene, okay, like where I am now, like the middle of the scene, just use a much lighter touch, okay, especially around the areas that you want to remain light, okay? See, I'm applying this down. You can tap, you can swipe, whatever. But as I do this, um, okay, I can do that, and there's still fairly decent amount of ink, but it's also darker to begin with, okay? So you want to just go with a much lighter touch, okay? Like that. And you can really manipulate your um, surface of your scene with um, various incarnations, values of any ink that you're using. So that being said, with any ink, no matter how dark it is, could be black, all right? Um, theoretically, the darkest ink uh, that you could be using, you could use any incarnation of that black or dark color just simply by the amount of pressure you use on it and how dry it is on your tip. So you can take any color that you have and go with every value of it, that color, all the way to white. So you can really get a lot of mileage out of your colors and ink pads. Uh, this is dye-based inks, that is, okay? Not so much pigment inks, but um, the dye-based inks, you can really um, push them, you know, to their limits. This one was Bahama Blue. Okay, now I haven't forgotten that I, I said I was going to do this kind of in a violet, um, kind of a hue, palette, whatever. Um, but of course, blue relates to violet, so I mean, I could have went in with different violet hues, but I'm just going to apply some... Uh, violet tones, or maybe even just pink, and start to turn this into, the, you know, kind of that direction. Um, let's go with the gray here. I'm going to use some of this gray down on my rocks. Okay, I kind of want to knock down the uh, the intensity of uh, this rock a little bit. I don't want it so bright blue. Okay, so the gray, uh, this is a Marvy number 12 gray. Um, you can use any gray in your uh, 
notepad collection. Um, the Memento London Fog would be a good choice too. Um, but use anything. You, you can use a gray that has a little bit of temperature to it. Warm gray, cool gray, whatever. Okay, let's see, why don't we just, for a little bit more continuity, I'll bring a little bit of this gray up into the sky. It's not reading as gray because I'm putting it over the top of uh, blue, various values of blue. And uh, dye-based inks are transparent, so the blue underneath is affecting what you see on the surface. Okay, let's move into some um, kind of more violet tones. This is a tip that I probably used um, some form of pink on there previously. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to think of what color I want to use. Let me see if I have a pink. For a pink Adirondack, but uh, I don't know if I have one. I mean, I have one, right? You know, I have these Marvy ones, but like I said, I wanted to kind of mix it up a little bit and start using some other types of pads. I, yeah, if I had a ring, if I pulled out a ring earlier, I would have used that one too. But okay, let's move on. Okay, this is a bubblegum pink. Now you can see as I, if I, you know, the areas that I retain some of the uh, um, areas of white, it reads as pink, right? Because pink over white is pink, and you can see as I put it over the blue, pink overlapping blue is some form of violet, okay? So you can see the difference between here and here. Pink over blue, no pink over blue. All right, but anyways, this is how you can get some nice variation as opposed to just going in straight with violet. You can always kind of mix it up a little bit and do colors that mix to form other colors. So if you want to use a, you know, do something, it doesn't have to be landscape stampy, but if you want to do like a green, um, palette for some project you're working on, and if you want some variations of it, instead of just going with green, then you can use blue and yellow or something like that. Or you can use green and use yellow and then get various temperatures of green. Um, typically when I'm doing this, though, I'm not going with, you know, when I'm going for this variation, I don't go in with a super, super bright pink or a dark purple, you know, for those variations. I usually start off with the lighter tones, so we have some light blue in here, and I have some, you know, some of the lighter pink, you know, something not too intense. Um, for my purposes, I start off with that, then I'll move into maybe a little bit of a darker violet here. So you can use whatever you have, you know, you can pull out all your pets, you know, your, um, all your blue, all your violet, pink, whatever, you know, and just try them out, you know, go for some variation and see how it looks. I usually start in my, kind of, the edges of my card. Um... When I first start off with a, a new hue that I'm introducing, especially if it's kind of dark, I start it on the edge. And then if I like it, I just add more. Okay. <clears throat> that purple that I just used was a number eight violet. Here's what I wanted to use too. 
Um, this is a Prussian blue. It's brand new. Um, it's a really, really dark blue from Marvy. I mean, you can see it right there. That really dark loops. Always zoom into these scenes to get some close up. I forget about that. Sorry. Um, anyways, really dark. It's one of my f just kind of favorite types of colors overall. Those colors that are really deep and almost, this blue can almost be. It's really, in terms of value, it's it's near black. But look at what a good kind of a framing device that is to have something, you know, so dark like that. And sometimes it's just kind of nice to use a, you know, dark color in the, in the corners of your, of your card that is not black. I mean, I might use black, but this is kind of a, it'll be kind of a nice transition before you get to black. Okay. Um, if you ever use Prussian blue for some reason, you know, certain types of inks really wash off your stamp really good right after you use the Prussian blue. I mean, you don't have to do it like, you know, within like five minutes or something like that, but I wouldn't let your stamp sit for, for a few days um, before cleaning it after the Prussian blue. The Prussian blue gets, uh, it can kind of stain the rubber. I mean, it won't ruin it or anything like that, and if it's kind of stained, you know, if you color it in with another color, it's not going to, uh, you know, read like Prussian blue, but um, I don't know, there's something to that to ink. It's very fine or something like that, and it seems to penetrate um, quickly. Or maybe not quickly, but uh, there's something kind of more permanent about it. Okay, that was the black that I just used on the edges there. And, um, all right, now I'm not going to attempt to get in that, into that snail with um, my stylus tool. So I'm just pulling out some um, alcohol-based pens here. And, uh, you know, there's various brands out there, of course. Um, a client of mine in Japan sent me these. Thank you for that, if you're watching. Alcohol-based pens are great, <laughs> you know, to get in those. Hard to reach areas, you know, um, with the dye based inks, but also it's really fantastic uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the two different um, ink types um, alcohol and water based, because I don't find this. Um, alcohol-based one to smear at all with the, the dye-based. And some people say say it does, but I, I've never run into that, you know, where I'm coloring down here and it's just like picking up some of that uh, water-based ink. Okay, if I want some little bit of purple tones down here, you know, I can put it on the rocks as opposed to putting a big slathering of that color down there. All right. Okay. So anyways, I just put some browns on that snail. Uh, I just I wanted kind of a warm tone. And I put a little pink in there just to uh, you know, kind of create a little bit of a relation to the uh, the lighting 
scheme of this scene. This is green. Let's paint a little bit of green down here just to kind of uh, add a little bit of a different element to the rocks from the sky. Okay, let me see if I can get a little bit of a shadow going um, underneath that snail just to kind of... I made, it, I made it darker in there to begin with, but let's see if I can just add a little bit more of a shadow. Really way too dark, right? It's that harsh line, so I'm going back in with a lighter tone and just kind of blending that out like you would, uh, you know, with any other um, blending pen from alcohol-based, okay? All right. Looks okay now. Let's zoom out, see how that looks. So we have a lot of tones down there. I think it looks okay. But it really needs something else, though, doesn't it? It's missing some variation, I would say, yeah, for sure. This is the foliage large stamp. You can use any kind of like a different foliage branch or something like that. It would be kind of nice, just to kind of give it a little bit of variation here. I'm stamping it out in black. Okay, um, it doesn't have to be all in the foreground. If we mask off some of that ledge, I could put it coming from behind the ledge. I mean, it's a ledge stamp, but, you know, I mean, if there's a little snail crawling on it. It's probably just like a small rock somewhere. By the way, that ledge stamp right there, um, it's actually hand indexed. The stamp right here is probably close to, I don't know, it could be 20 years old and it still works just fine. Uh, one of the benefits of just, you know, working with 100% um, red rubber is potentially your stamps could last a very long time. We don't really know the lifetime of clear stamps um, and how long they'll last. But, uh, they could last for a while, but um, I don't know, just you working with the natural um, compound is uh, nice. It's a little bit more predictable, uh, I think. But anyways, I can tell the age of that stamp there because it's hand indexed. Um, we used to stamp our images on the top of the wood uh, before going to labels. Okay. Now, I could probably stamp out that saying right there in maybe black ink right there and it would show. Um, a good traveler has no fixed plans and is not intent on arriving. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of a little twist, you know, showing a little snail there, but I thought that would be kind of a fun little saying, but um, I was just gonna say, you know, with the use of these gel pens, and um, it's kind of fun, kind of on a darker surface like that, but the handwritten, um, you know, I might not do this sometimes, uh, the bottom of this is a little bit wet, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a little, a little bit of a block here, so I won't to smear that there. Uh, let's see, let's go about like that. Okay. But just, if you handwrite something on there, you can really kind of, 
personalize something a little bit more too. I, I'm not going to worry about spacing on this. Um, I'm just going to do it very casually and uh, we'll see how it turns out. Okay. Yeah, let's see. This, this is a unibol signal. It's not kind of. Let me see if it's flowing here. Let me get this flowing here. I think my ball here is a little bit clogged. Let me switch out. Here's another one. Okay. Hey, good. A good traveler has no fixed plans and is not. Adding that in there, it's just, I'm not really so concerned with uh, legibility, you know. Um, what this, what it ends up being, okay, I'm adding some additional stars in here, what it, what I'm going for is just kind of another texture. Uh, that's what it is for me, and it's another layer it's kind of a somewhat of a decorative element. I mean, you can, doesn't have to be a quote. I mean, you can write something like, uh, you know, if you're sending a card to someone, it's kind of nice to have just whatever your own handwriting right on the card like that. You could say, you know, I mean, it'd probably be a different subject matter than, you know, a snail. Uh, rock, but, uh, you know, it could be a birthday or something like that, you know, hope you had a great one, or get well soon, thinking about you, you know what I mean, type of thing, on a, um, card, you can have a, do a scene of, uh, someone fishing, send it someone who likes fishing, so, you know, it could be a leg and you write out in the uh, card, you know, uh, you know, good luck on your next uh, outing, whatever. It just, it kind of adds a nice decorative um, element, and it's kind of a nice layer. Um, because it's something that, I mean, writing is two-dimensional, and here you have it. It's a good contrast, and you hear me talk about contrast all the time, but it's a contrast in terms of, of depth. Because, I mean, here you have this sky here, or something like that, or a space, you know. You could be doing the writing over the whole thing if you want to. But here you have this area that kind of represents a certain amount of depth and space. And then you're putting this writing right over the top of it that's very two-dimensional. So you have that kind of, what's the word, juxtaposition or whatever, that contrast of those two different elements. They're kind of opposing elements, but kind of complementary at the same time when it comes to a kind of a, a visual statement. So, anyways, um, I 
you saw that last uh, little uniball signal. I don't know. I need it. If I scribble it around a little bit, it'll get flowing again. But this one's working great. It's the same exact type. Um, I want to go for something a little bit larger. Oh, perfect. I don't even know if I've used this one yet. This uh, lavender Sharpie paint pen. working good. The paint, the paint one kind of, it leaves up kind of a thicker little blob of ink. Blob in terms of a, a good thing, not kind of an uncontrolled, you know, spatter of ink or something like that. Anyways, that was the violet. Since I did this in violet, could do it in blue or whatever. But um, anyways, um, it's kind of a fun little twist to your scenes or whatever. Just uh, take a pen and just go right over the top of it. If you're going over the top of it with a, you know, like a gel pen like this, and let's say you get some writing down, and it, let's say if you don't like it at all, you probably have a little bit of time, you know, or you can just take a paper towel, and you can just buff it out, okay? And it probably will come right off without affecting what's underneath there. Um, but anyways, uh, the, the gel pens are kind of nice in that they're... I don't know, they're probably sold as something a little bit more opaque, but um, but I find them to be a little more translucent, so the colors underneath the the marks still kind of uh, show through it a little bit, which I like because I think it blends in with the uh, with the terrain a little bit better or the surrounding area, and um, I think the the lettering or the the writing kind of. Uh, has a stronger relationship with the uh, the overall as a result of the translucency of it. So, anyways, uh, just a quick little scene here, and uh, I don't know. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the techniques. Thanks for watching.